Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm at the Eurasian Community House and today we're here to find out more about the rich and unique culture, history and food of Eurasian Singaporeans. I'm about to meet someone very special named Valerie Scully. She knows all about the Eurasian Association and this unique culture. So let's go. This beautiful space is the Eurasian Heritage Gallery and I think she's around the corner somewhere. I have here with me Valerie. She is an expert in all things Eurasian. Yes. For some people who might not know Valerie, what is a Eurasian? A Eurasian is a community formed when the Europeans came to our part of the world and intermarried our local women. First came the Portuguese in 1511, followed by the Dutch in 1641, and later by the British in 1819. They came in search of spices and trade, and that formed the Eurasian race. We're standing here in the beautiful gallery at the Eurasian Association. What is the history of the Eurasian Association? The Eurasian Association was formed in 1919 by a group of gentlemen who thought it best that we could have all the Eurasians put together and uh, form the association. Do you know that the Singapore Recreation Club was one time a, a Eurasian club? Oh wow! Yeah, that's where they had their early beginnings when they used to gather together and thought it would be nice to have an association of our own. And Eurasians loved sports and they were looking at the Padang as a place in front of the Simple Recreation Club where they could come and exercise and, and have sports there. What are some of the kind of unique aspects of Eurasian culture that you love to share with people? Of course, the most unique is our food. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's both West and East blended together. And I've also heard that there are some traditional Eurasian medicinal cures. Yes. That's something very new to me. Right. In our grandmothers and mothers' time, perhaps medicine was not readily available and they had their own mixtures put together for healing purposes. One of them is the candle nut. We know of candle nut being used in curries and sambals, etc. What happens is that a handful is gathered together and pounded until fine, and a couple of drops of brandy, it is put together and stirred together and made into a paste, and they have it put on a lint and then put on a bandage. And that is then applied onto a bruise. And another one is the aruda plant. The aruda plant was soaked in a bottle of eau de cologne and kept away. And when a child has fever, they would use the cologne would have been infused into the root of plant, put it on a cotton wool and dab around the pressure points of the child to reduce the fever. But do people still use these traditional cures these days? Not that I, that I know of, really, because Western medicine has really taken over the whole wide world. We would go to a dispensary or a pharmacy or to the doctors and get a cure for that. Like all Singaporean communities, food is at the heart of Eurasian culture. There's a restaurant here at the Eurasian Association called Quentin's. They specialize in Eurasian cuisine and I'm going to learn from Chef Quentin himself. Valerie, will you show me the way please? Let's go. So nice to meet you. Same here. This is Chef Quentin Pereira. He owns Quentin's restaurant here at the Eurasian Association and he is an expert in Eurasian food. I can see that you have some ingredients laid out already. Are you perhaps showing me how you're going to make some Eurasian food today? Yeah, we're going to do a Kristang stew. Kristang stew is something like a soup that is served when someone in the family is not feeling too good. This comforting Kristang stew sounds like something I would really enjoy, so I really want to see how you make it. Sure, you will do the cooking and I'll, I'll assist you. Okay, wow. <laughs> First, what we need to do is we need to marinate the, the chicken, mm -hmm. white pepper powder. We marinate it with the soya sauce. If we didn't have chicken, we could use uh, corned beef, we could use uh, spam, that kind of things. So we're going to use quite a bit of onions. So big chunks of the carrots? 
Chef, this dish is called Kristang Stew. So what does Kristang mean? I think a lot of people are unfamiliar with that word. It's also a language, it's also a people, and now it's a stew. Usually it's for the Portuguese Eurasians. Okay, so they will call them Kristangs. Because the language that they speak, Kristang is also Portuguese, Patois Portuguese. So we're just toasting the white peppercorns to make them more fragrant, to let the aromas come out. And the cloves have gone in as well. And dry toasting the spices is actually quite an important step. We're just breaking up the cinnamon stick. And then we're going to add in the oil. And the onions go in. And I'm sure a lot of people have heard of some Eurasian dishes at least, especially curry debal. Debal means leftovers in Patois Portuguese. Ah. What people didn't realize was that it was so spicy, they didn't know the meaning of debal, and they thought it was devil. So it became more popularly known as devil's curry instead of curry debal. There's sliced onion and there's quartered onions as well. I think it's just nice. We're going to add in the chicken together with the marinade. I'm going to stir for a bit and I'm going to add in the water. So once it starts boiling, we can add in the chicken cocktails, mm -hmm. potatoes, carrots. Do you have kids, Chef? Two. Two sons. Is it very important to you to pass down these recipes to younger Eurasians? Easiest way for somebody to accept the culture or the heritage is through food. But the younger generations don't take into that, right? And then the recipes all be lost. It reminds me of my younger days. Uh, my mom or dad used to make it. It's so simple, but we always look forward to it. Every time when you get the fragrance of the spices, you go back in time, you know? The, just imagine the whole house and you, you got that smell. This is one of those occasions that you wish that a camera can send smells over to whoever's watching because this seriously smells so, so amazing. So this is a final garnish, julienne spring onion. This is Chinese celery, right? Yeah. Here we go, my first taste of the famous Kristang stew. Mmm, it's so good, chef. That light spice flavor really kind of warms you up from the inside. It's so delicious. It's been amazing to learn about the deep traditions within the Eurasian community. And if you want the same experience, come visit the Eurasian Association for yourself. And don't forget to check out the Heritage Fest website at www.sgheritagefest.gov.sg.